<laughs> wait, what? Hey, this is the Haha, ha, Wait, What? podcast with Mandy Brooke. I'm an entertainer, content creator, and musician. You may know me from my song parodies and funny antics on Instagram and TikTok. On my podcast, we try to make sense of the confusing parts of life because literally we're all winging it and have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> and that's totally okay. So relax, grab a glass of wine, and let's chat. Hey, besties. I hope you're feeling very fancy free today because we're going to be talking about feminine energy, what it is, how to embrace it, and most importantly, how to use it. Now, I've talked about feminine energy in a previous episode called Dating in Your 30s, What I've Learned About Men and Femininity So Far, where I take a pretty deep dive into my own dating experiences and how I've wielded my feminine energy to get results and also learn more about myself. I'll link it below in the show notes. I definitely suggest y'all listen to that one too. But before I get into this, just a disclaimer, this podcast episode is for anyone wanting to embrace their feminine energy, but I'm going to be speaking on my experience as a woman with a uterus <laughs> and embracing my femininity in my own life. My experience in no way reflects everyone's path, but no matter how you identify, each person holds masculine and feminine energy, but one is often more dominant than the other. So if you're a feminine leading person, you'll definitely find something to chew on on this episode, too. All that to say, I love being a woman. It's like Shania Twain all over again. Man, I feel like a woman. <laughs> I love invoking my soft, nurturing and sensual side, which is an energy that just oozes, especially when I'm ovulating. <laughs> I love the strength of my body and what my body can do and what it endures every month. Crampy ladies, can I hear you from the back? <laughs> we are literally the home of the world, creating life with sacred wombs that have the potential of holding generations, destiny, and purpose. And we admit a strong frequency that affects everyone around us. It's why happy wife, happy life is a saying, because the woman sets the vibration of the home. I really, truly believe that. We are the warm hearth, the soft spot to land, and the quiet strength for the ones that we love, which is like pretty fucking sick if you want to think about it that way. <laughs> We're awesome. <laughs> but since I began embracing my feminine energy, my entire life completely changed. I became present in my life for the very first time. So what is feminine energy? Feminine energy is the allowing. It's leaning back. It's cultivating comfort within ourselves and the environment around us. It's paying attention to how situations affect the feelings in our bodies. It's vulnerability, nurturing, and warmth. It's the strength through softness. Feminine energy allows experiences to come rather than to seek them out. It responds to the environment around us and creates a home exactly where we are. I call it internal nesting. <laughs> Feminine energy nurtures creativity, curiosity, and above all, play. Yes, playfulness is a huge factor, and I'll get into that a bit later. But embracing your feminine energy by leaning back in no way means you're a doormat. Actually, it's quite the opposite. That's why it's really important to mix dark feminine energy with light feminine energy. Because if you're all light, then you're too nice. And if you're all dark, then you'll be pretty lonely. Let me explain. So dark feminine energy is that sultry Lana Del Rey mystique. The dark feminine loves themselves unconditionally, and they are their first priority. Because she focuses all of that delicious nurturing and love within, and she doesn't rely on other people's validation to measure her worth, the dark feminine sets her boundaries and allows people to show their dedication through their actions. She doesn't waste her time, and she's extremely selective. Now, I gotta work on that a bit, <laughs> I have to admit. I lean a lot toward the light aspect of femininity. And I tend to give way too much. That people pleaser mentality is a bitch to break, but we can all do it. For example, goddesses, queens, they don't just allow people in their lives that shit all over their golden throne. <laughs> 
No pun intended. Their self-worth is so immense and huge that when their personal boundaries are breached, that person is beheaded. I mean, don't go killing motherfuckers, but definitely don't put up with their fuckery either. Personal boundaries are the rule book where your femininity operates from. It allows you to see who a person really is so you can act accordingly. And acting accordingly doesn't always mean huge conflict and war. Queens, they aren't dramatic because confidence is silent. The feminine often executes their will by simply not engaging. They simply cannot be bothered by someone who isn't respectful. Which is why a queen's apathetic gaze is way more gut-wrenching than one of disdain. All of that to say, don't give energy to people who don't deserve it. Not everyone can have the privilege, and yes, I said privilege, of experiencing your nurturing comfort and allowance. That's that soft, light femininity. It's not given freely. Queens, goddesses, they choose where they allow their energy to live. Before I started embracing all of what feminine energy is, and I'm sure you guys can identify with this. I took my life way, way too seriously, especially in my 20s. I actually feel younger now than I did back then. (laughs) I just didn't give myself enough room to enjoy the breeze in my hair or dance to songs in the grocery store, because when dixie plays some jams, let me tell you, I was always trying to do and go and plan because we live in a masculine world where working obsessively is rewarded and rest is a luxury. And in turn, I found myself constantly drained of energy, like I was moving through mud, which I now understand was my body telling me that I wasn't in alignment with my natural frequency. I was fully in my masculine energy, and it affected my marriage, my body, the way I was perceived, everything. I was always too consumed with the physical, with the lack I felt rather than the abundance all around me. And that's another thing about feminine energy, ladies. It's abundant, betch. It's the ultimate abundance mindset. You know, affirmations, manifesting. When you embrace your femininity, it's like saying to the universe, I trust that everything I need will be provided for me. Now, some of y'all are probably laughing like, Mandy, you have no kids. How the fuck can you say to lean back? My bills are due. Aliens are fucking real. Life is chaos. And how the hell am I supposed to just chill when I'm working my ass off to provide for myself and my children, if you have them? And to that I say, the more you put yourself in the mindset of play and the affirmation that everything I need will be provided for me, then the rest will take care of itself. You just have to allow it to show itself, and it takes patience. You can continue to physically work while your spirit takes a back seat. You can provide for your family, but not become it. Believe it or not, you can be beholden to you and only you, which means paying close attention to your body, your feelings, and where your energy is being called to. You gotta be selfish, my dear, so that you can give to those who need you. That will bring you the abundance you seek. And once you're there, trust me, you'll want to stay there. So when I began my spiritual journey, I realized that nothing actually matters. Nothing in the real world anyway. Love is the only thing that's worth a fuck. All that pain and the sorrow mixed with moments of enlightenment and confusion and success is what life is. That's why Buddha said life is suffering, because unfortunately, life deals us some pretty shitty hands and some really growly tummies. I hope you guys heard that. (laughs) But we're so used to being in our masculine energy, and we try to control literally everything in our lives. We try to control the flow of the chaos, and that's impossible. Being in your feminine energy is learning how to flow with the chaos, to find the joy in the sadness, the play in the mundane. I truly believe that we're here on this planet solely to have a human experience. With all of the happiness and the agony, all of the emotions, good and bad, that's the purpose of living, really. And once I wrapped my mind around that existential part, I was able to really let go and feel my way through life and embrace my femininity. Now, I'm definitely not perfect. My mom can attest to this. (laughs) I have many moments of overthinking and overanalyzing and being in my masculine energy. But I guess I'm just more conscious of it now, and I have tools to get myself back into my feminine. 
Which brings me to the next part, how to embrace and cultivate your feminine energy. I have a few tools in my arsenal of fun ways to implement your femininity. Even if you do one of these things, I'm sure you'll feel a noticeable difference. It's a journey, guys, not a destination. So have fun with it. It's all about play and having some fun, girl. So the very first thing that I started to do to embrace my femininity was to notice the feelings inside of my body. As women, our guts tell us everything we need to know. We know when a guy is bad for us or when a situation doesn't feel quite right or safe. It's called intuition, baby. And I began to listen to her. I stopped dismissing my feelings to make other people feel comfortable, too. And when I communicate with men, for example, I let them know how my body is feeling because the masculine understands this above all else. For example, ooh, you give me tingles in my stomach when you text me good morning. Or the latter, mm, I, I don't feel safe right now. And like I said before, I get way more into this topic on a previous podcast episode that I mentioned before, and I'll link in the show notes below. Noticing how your body is feeling is the key to being sensual. And sensuality is not sexuality. Sensuality is being in the moment and savoring a hot shower after a long day and allowing yourself to massage your legs when you put lotion on. I think of it as my own little hiding spot, you know, like that private moment for myself where I show up for myself and I pay attention to my body. So embracing the feeling of those little moments, even seemingly insignificant ones, is really crucial to embracing your femininity. I did this a lot when I visited Italy this year, especially Venice. I savored the feeling of the cobblestone streets and touched the architecture and gazed at the blooming wisteria on the walls at sunset. I found moments in my life to take my time and to savor and to feel. And you don't have to go to Italy to savor the moment. You can find little moments in your life, like the car ride home from work, to just enjoy it and to savor it, even if you're in traffic. I know this sounds really weird. I used to really savor just listening to my podcast and not my podcast, other people's podcasts. <laughs> I just drive in my car listening to my own podcast. Or I'd put on my favorite playlist and I would savor getting stuck in traffic because that just meant that I was alone for a little bit longer and I could just feel and be happy and enjoy myself. Kind of like what I said before, you find joy in the mundane, especially when you embrace your femininity. The second way to embrace your feminine is to play. <laughs> I mentioned this before too, but there's always room to be curious and playful with aspects of your life. There's always a time to dance in the living room, and there's always a time to laugh and smile. I always go back to the example of being an eight-year-old kid and how carefree life was. We can still find those moments in our lives today as adults to dance, to laugh at a funny movie, to flirt with your husband, to build a fort with your kids, to be Drew Barrymore and play in the rain. <laughs> Just allow yourself to let go once in a while, especially if you're dating. Again, I get into this in the other episode, but the masculine loves play. It's the complete opposite of the energy that they possess and what they deal with day to day. And embracing it makes you just so much more present in your life, bitch. The third thing, and this may sound a little silly and very kind of shallow, but it's to dress in flowy, light, and breathable material. Because if feminine energy is all about flow and feeling, then you want to feel flow and feeling on your physical body, right? For me and my style, that means dresses, bitch. I can fuck with a tea dress, let me tell you, honey. And my Amazon storefront shows it. All my favorites are there, so if you need a dress recommendation, I got you. But if dresses aren't your thing, then choosing a really good linen pant, something cotton, something flowy, a cute blouse, those all do the trick too. See, the physicality of flow is important to cultivate flow within. I know when I'm dressed in tight jeans and tight restricting material, Spanx, I hate my life and I can't fucking breathe. <laughs> So I'm not flowing, bitch. I choose to dress in a lighter way to extend the lightness, the softness of my energy. 
Speaking of softness, the fourth way to embrace your femininity is to be soft with yourself, to nurture yourself like you would a kid. I know this sounds a little weird, but hear me out. Our inner commentary is often pretty harsh and mean. Oh, you're so dumb. Why the fuck did you say that? I'm so fat, blah, 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 blah. You know the script. But what would happen if we decided to speak to ourselves like we were speaking to our younger selves? Do you think that you'd be staring at the eight-year-old version of you and say, oh, you're such a stupid bitch? No, (laughs) I hope not. You'd hold her while she cried and you'd nurture her and tell her everything will be okay. That's exactly what you need to do for yourself now. So what I want you to do is grab a picture of yourself as a child, a really cute one. Make sure you just are just supple cheeks, super cute. You just want to pinch them, right? Tape it to your bathroom mirror or keep it by your bedside. And every time you want to call yourself fat or stupid and that inner harsh commentary starts happening, pick up that picture and just dare to say it to that cute little bitch. I bet you won't. I bet you'll quickly turn those words into encouragement for that little you. Try it. And lastly, number five, how to embrace your feminine energy. And probably the most important thing that I can tell anyone is to allow yourself to rest, dear. Allow yourself to go to bed early, to sit and read a book, to put down your phone after seven o'clock and just sit with yourself. Rest is not a luxury. It's a necessity, especially for the feminine. I'll be honest, it's really hard for me to relax, and I'm still learning how to do this, but it's crucial. Take a fucking nap, bitch. You don't need to feel like you've conquered the world to earn time off. You can just rest right now. The things that are meant to happen for you will still come even if you rest. It's all about being soft and nurturing with yourself. Well, I think that's it for this episode. I really hope I helped guide you on where to start embracing your delicious, addictive feminine energy. Because I'm telling y'all, once you start, you won't want to stop. And if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you for a cute little favor. If you could please just rate and review this podcast, I would really appreciate it. It becomes more visible in the algorithm the more rates and reviews you have. And I want to spread the message of positivity and lift the vibrations of the world. That's my goal. (laughs) Until next time, be a fucking delight, bitch. Bye.